We're into round four of the FIDE World Cup. And this is game two of the match between Magnus Carlsen and Radoslav Wojtaszek. Game one was a very tense draw. Remember that Carlsen uh, offered a draw in a slightly unclear situation. I think it was a very pragmatic draw offer um, because he knew in game two he had the white pieces. And frankly, he has a good record against Wojtaszek. So let's see what happened. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Let's try and hit 100k. So on with the game. Carlsen, as I said, with the white pieces. Now, fair play to uh, Wojtaszek because he's not backing down. He normally plays the knight off and clearly when he's plays d6, he's ready to play the knight off again. And... He said in his post-game interview um, after, after game one that he said against Magnus, you have to play aggressively. Uh, you know, you, you don't back down against him. And that's what he's done here. But Magnus goes bishop b5 check and d4. And in the past, everyone just played queen takes d4 in this position. But it's so interesting to see knight takes d4 and... This is actually quite a modern trend, would you believe it? Uh, it's, it's really come to the fore over the last year or so. So basically we have um, an, an open Sicilian where white hasn't committed the knight c3 yet. That gives extra possibilities. Uh, black is being tempted into taking that pawn on e4. Uh, probably not very good, for example, here. And knight f5 uh, gives white tremendous play. By the way, that's mate in one threatened. Um, so anyway, instead of taking the pawn, wisely, Wojtaszek plays pawn to a6, getting rid of that bishop or to, to a certain extent. And bishop a4. e6. And, and here is the point that as white hasn't played the knight c3, it's still possible to play c4, establishing this Morozzi bind, uh, and which uh, Wojtaszek is, is happy to go into. And curiously enough, Carlsen played in exactly this way with the black pieces himself. So a game against Nakamura in uh, you know one of the these uh, online events, uh, this year, actually, Nakamura played bishop b3 against Carlsen. And it went like this. And if you recall, in fact, I, I've covered the game on, on this channel. And if you recall, it was an uh, absolutely wild affair. Um, but typical hedgehog position. But in this game, Carlsen, well, he thought for, for 10 minutes, almost 10 minutes, and played... A very aggressive move. Pawn to f4. So he's going for it straight away. It It's incredibly dangerous for, for both sides. Because when you play f4, of course, you expose the king here. Also dangerous for black because white is setting up potential threats to play e5 or possibly f5 to break down this point on e6. Knight b6 hits the bishop, and here e5. So I think it's absolutely necessary that the black breaks in the center to try and d distract white. And knight f5. I mean, this is the move that generally you want to play in response to e5 if you can occupy that square. Now, of course, black can't live with that knight, has to exchange off. Now, we have this situation where white has the two bishops. That's light squared bishop is the extra bishop. If that bishop could get on the other side of that pawn, or maybe even just give up a pawn, um, then white would be doing pretty well. But, you know, these key squares like d5 and e4, at the moment, they're covered by black knights. So that's another thing that white wants to try and get in on those light squares as well. But black has pretty good central control. Rook e8, an excellent move. 
lining up opposite the queen. And here, if white, for example, takes here and plays bishop g5, well, in fact, black is doing fine. You can play a5, you can see that there's potential to attack this pawn. There's always going to be some kind of nasty check here. Black is fine in this position. But Carlson, well, he understands the dynamics in this position and played g4. He's just playing very aggressively. He wants to try and shake black's hold in the center and establish a grip on the light squares. But it's not so clear. And this is a, a really interesting moment. Uh, Vatoshek plays bishop f8. And in fact, he has an incredible move in this position, a really beautiful move. Um, queen c6. So this was not played, but queen c6 is such a beautiful counter-attacking move. You know, I've, I mean, I've played both sides of the Sicilian, but I've always really loved counter-attacking with black, and this fits so beautifully. So the idea is that you're controlling a lot of squares here, um, but you're stepping away from this bishop. And if g5, here is the incredible move. Black has pawn to d5, this classic counter-attacking move, which allows that bishop to come to c5, checking the king, and also, of course, opening up the e-file. And, and this is already... Uh, very, very dangerous, obviously. Um, I mean, white can survive by playing this and heading for an endgame. But, I mean, black is obviously not worse here. Uh, so, an incredible move. Queen c6, a beautiful move. Threatening to break with, G, uh, with uh, d5. Uh, but instead, Vatashek played bishop f8, hitting the queen, so Carlson moved the queen away, and he took on, Votoshek took on c4, so he has won a pawn for his trouble, but now Carlson gets in g5, and the game is clearly turning in white's favour, so Carlson has managed to get control over this key light square in the middle of the board with a knight on d5. Queen check, the king goes in the corner. So in this position, the diagonal is now covered by the queen, which protects the knight. And things are actually looking pretty good for white. So Carlson steams on. I mean, this is so typical of his style. He doesn't mess around. He's just going straight for it. Rook b8, that's for to play for tactical reasons. Votoshek wants to move this rook up the board at some moment. But he's mindful of the fact that that rook is on the same diagonal as the queen and wants to avoid discovered attacks. Rook d1. Good move, protecting that knight in the middle. Knight takes. Rook takes. And, well, well, I mean, white's pieces are, are so dangerous on the king side. There are so many interesting threats. Rook e5, there we go. That rook comes up the board, and now there's no danger with uh, the, the rook on the long diagonal. And here, I mean, Wojtaszek is, is fighting. You know, he's putting pressure on this knight. Potentially, he can double on the e-file. But actually, it's too little too late. Carlsen is winning this position. Rook h4 is an excellent move. So, for example, if pawn takes, pawn takes h6, attempting to close the position, then queen f3 is an incredibly strong move, threatening queen f7 and then rook h6, and the queen switches to h7. So Wojtaszek takes on f5. 
And just when it seemed as though the win was in the bag, Carlsen makes an inaccurate move. He played bishop c2 here. He could have taken on h7. And this should win. So the threat is to play rook h8, followed by queen h3 and queen h7 mate. Okay, that's that's the easy one to spot. So pawn takes, queen takes, the rook is hit. If rook takes knight, now here is the crucial move. White wins with rook f1. So the threat is to play rook takes bishop and then queen takes pawn. And actually black has no defense in this position. Absolutely no defense. So for example, here's, here's one very, very attractive line. Rook g5, queen check, king takes. Looks like white is running out of pieces, but there we go. That light squared bishop has its say. Check. And if king h6, rook f6, and queen h7 mate. Wow! Wonderful stuff. So, rook h7 is a winning move. Are these variations easy to spot? Well, it's not so simple. Um, it's very easy to, to overlook something, and then you see one problem in these variations and think, oh, it's not working. And, well, clearly Carson saw something he didn't like, and you know, move to another move. Of course, he would have looked at rook h7. It's kind of the most obvious attacking move, but he went for bishop c2. He, I should mention that both players, they weren't, I wouldn't call it time pressure. They were both running, but they were running low on the clock. Let's put it like that. Um, and of course, you know, that's, that's pressure. So bishop c2, still a very dangerous move. Queen f2, and really that's the only defense. That's that's an excellent move. So um, Wojtaszek is prepared to give up the exchange. Pawn takes, king takes, and here Carlson took the rook. Um, in fact he could still play for more with queen e4. I mean, this is a computery move. You know, after this, incredibly, king g2 leaves this rook really embarrassed. Um, it, it's still not so clear after rook c8 uh, with the idea that, um, well, black is the exchange down, but, you know, has, has pretty good compensation. So queen e4 was still a way to go, but... Bishop takes rook played instead, and queen takes rook. There we go. Rook is hanging. So what's the score? Um, Carlson now two pawns down, but obviously still with the initiative. And rook f4 hits the queen. Queen check. Rook f1. Of course, the queen could go back to h4, and it should be a draw. Interesting. For Tarshak plays queen e5, playing on a little bit. You know, that that shows that he's he's not cowed by uh, Carlson. You know, he's not backing down at all. He's just playing a little bit. Queen h3 from Carlson. In fact, white is absolutely fine here. So, for example, if uh, obviously a threat to take here. And if g6, then knight check wins the queen. Uh, so Wojtaszek took the knight, check, rook f3, so now there are two threats to take here, and also bishop e6 check, queen check, check again, and it's a draw by perpetual check or threefold repetition. Well, that was a, a really dramatic game, um, but I have to say, great credit to uh, Radislav Wojtaszek for holding that game and and really, you know, under under pressure, very difficult circumstances, 
um, he continued to play actively. I think that's really important. And Carlson couldn't quite find his way through. And Vytashek got the draw at the end. Uh, Carlson will be disappointed because, you know, playing moves like g4, you're really going for it. And actually, his aggression paid off. He did get a winning position. But yeah, he'll be disappointed not to clinch that win. So, two draws in this match. They now go to the tie breaks, rapid play, two rapid play games. Of course, Carlson will uh, is the favourite. He'll, he'll consider himself the favourite. But nevertheless, it's a, a closer match than I think many had anticipated. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, don't forget that uh, the merch sale is still on. So if you want to want to get your Octopus Night merch, there we go. Mugs, t-shirts, hoodies, etc. Um, and in various shapes and sizes and colours, then do check out the uh, link to the merch sale. You'll find it in the video description and in the comments. 20% discount for the next few days. Um, and don't forget, like, comment, share and subscribe. And do consider supporting us via PayPal or Patreon. That's enough. Thank you.